I've been wanting to get a standing desk for like two years now, but as you'll know if you've ever shopped for one, there are a ton of options out there. While this probably means that you'll be able to find the exact right one for you, it can also be a bit paralyzing. But after all this time researching, I finally bought one. The iMover Energize, a desk that has almost no reviews. In fact, besides maybe a paragraph or two on Reddit, the only review site I could find that wrote about it was one that was owned by the same company that owns iMover. Did that make me nervous? Absolutely. But has it turned out to be worth the nearly thousand dollars that I paid for it? It seems like it, but there's an asterisk we'll have to get back to. Before that, though, let's talk about the ordering process. Like most standing desks, there are a ton of ways you can customize it. The options I went with are up on the screen, along with what it ended up costing. Which is, as you'll recognize if you've been shopping for standing desks, quite a bit more than most of the popular options out there, especially given that I didn't get a hardwood desktop. This is probably because most of the parts for this desk are made in either the US or Europe. The desktops are made by iMover in the Michigan factory, and the legs are made in the US as well, though not by iMover it seems, more on that in a bit. As far as I can tell, the only parts that aren't made in the US are the motors themselves, which are made by Bosch somewhere in Europe, and the actual controller used to make it go up and down. That's made in China, which I can sort of give them a pass for since electronics manufacturing doesn't really happen anywhere else. During the ordering process, I had to call the support team and the person I talked to was absolutely great, though I can't speak to how much they'll try to upsell you since I was pretty much getting the maxed out version. You probably won't have to call them though, as the only reason I did was to get their conquest discount, which gets you a hundred bucks off if you send them a picture of you using another company's standing desk. Shout out, by the way, to the Updesk Easy Up, the review of which is the first video I ever made for this channel. While I was talking to the sales rep though, they told me that the week previous had been iMover's busiest week ever due to a lot of people starting to work from home, so I expected that me actually getting the desk might take a little while. However, it shipped reasonably quickly for a desk that's made to order. I bought it on April 3rd and I got it on the 21st. I was supposed to get it on the 17th, which is the previous Friday, but there was a shipping delay, which is understandable in the midst of a global pandemic. There are a lot of complaints online about the shipping company they use though, and while I didn't really have any problems myself, I'll link to some of those in the description. Not that you get a choice with who to ship through, it's just something good to know. The desk came in two boxes, one had the desktop and the other had the motors, frame, and hardware. Now, I mentioned earlier that it doesn't seem like iMover themselves make the frame. When I was putting it together, I noticed the box had a label on it that said null. When I looked up who that was, I discovered that they're a furniture company that also happens to own Fully? Um, that's a name you'll be familiar with if you've been looking at standing desks. Anyways, unlike the Fully frames, it does appear like the Knoll base is made in the US, so iMover isn't pulling a fast one on you by claiming it's made in America while using a base that's not. Which is good to know, and it's not weird that they'd get the frame from a different company, that's a fairly standard practice, it's just interesting that they'd leave the sticker on. Anyways, putting the desk together was relatively simple, though I did mess up and use machine screws instead of wood screws to attach the frame to the desktop. For some reason they had sent me a bag of them, even though those are supposed to be used with the slim top. After I realized what had happened, I had to take them all out and replace them with the ones that I was supposed to have used, a bag of which was thankfully also in the box. Somehow I just ended up with both types and the manual didn't really make it clear which one was which. I'm sure I should have known the difference between machine screws and wood screws, but it was early in the morning. Even with that screw up though, it only took my fiance and I about an hour to put it together. If you end up getting this desk, I would recommend that you have someone else with you when you go to assemble it, though I don't think it'd be impossible to put together by yourself if you have to. It's just easier if you have someone to help, but maybe social distancing is more important at this point. So I got the desk set up and I've been using it for a while. Was it worth the price premium? To answer that, let's look at the main reason I went with the Energize over any of its competition. Stability. I had seen a couple of reviews for desks like Foley's Jarvis where the person says that it doesn't wobble too much, and then proceeds to move it an inch or two forwards or backwards. For me, that was way too much. If I wanted to have a desk that shook when I typed, I would have just stayed with my homemade one. 
I'm happy to report though that the Energizer is very solid. If you're leaning on it or bumping into it or shaking your leg restlessly like I always do, your monitors will move a bit, especially if they're heavy. But as far as them moving while I'm typing, it doesn't really seem to happen no matter how aggressively I'm mashing the keyboard. But what about the desktop where you'll actually be doing your work? Well, I think it's pretty nice. They say it's made with some special 3D lamination process, which is their own proprietary thing. Uh, from what I can tell, that means that it's got an MDF core with about three millimeter thick plasticky painty coating. In use, it gives it a very silky feel that's a relief when compared to the splintery wood of my old desk, and which feels relatively different to any of the other laminate desks I've used in the past. The edges are also curved for comfort, which is nice for when I'm typing, but Look, I know this is probably a pretty niche problem, but every side of the desk is curved, which makes me feel a little insecure about the clamp mounts I have for my headphones and microphone. Obviously, that won't be an issue for everyone, and I haven't had any real problems with it so far, at least since upgrading from my incredibly cheap microphone boom arm, it's just something to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that while I find the finish super comfortable, so does my cat. And for whatever reason, cat hair sticks to this thing like crazy. If he walks across it, I have to spend a minute or two blowing the whole thing off with this little air blimp thing. It's a small price to pay for comfort, I suppose, but if you have pets that you foolishly let into your office, maybe consider getting a top that's the same color as their fur. Also worth noting is that sometimes the desktop creaks a little bit when I'm really leaning on it. Not necessarily in a concerning way, but it's something you wouldn't expect in such a premiumly priced product. Though it does seem to have broken in and doesn't do it as much anymore, but also maybe it's just that I've adjusted and stopped leaning on it in whatever way makes the sound, it's kinda hard to tell. Looking under the desktop, you may find this cable management cubby. If you bother to install it, which I obviously did not. It's big enough to hold the cable and power supply for the two motors and not much else. If you're using the desk with anything more than a laptop on it, just get yourself an Ikea Signum and you'll have all the cable management capacity you need. On the subject of cable management, the desk also has two very large holes that don't have any exposed MDF on the inside, which is a nice touch. They're good to have if you have your desk up against a wall, though it is kind of weird that the holes don't have any rubber or brushy grommet around them. That's something I've seen on a lot of other desks. As for the frame, you know, the part that makes this a standing desk, I don't have too many complaints. It moves up and down at a reasonable speed and noise level, and it goes way lower and way higher than I can imagine being necessary. Then again, I did get the extended version, and I guess it's nice to have that flexibility, you know, if I want to sit cross-legged on the floor while I do my work. There is one bad thing that may be unique to my unit, and that's that the legs often squeak while they're moving, usually while I'm lowering the desk. I don't think it's a huge issue, and like the creaking, it definitely does it less now than it did when it was new, but it is a bit annoying to have that kind of problem with a desk that, again, costs double what a lot of the others do. That said, it doesn't seem like an indication of anything being broken, as it appears to work just fine. The good news is that if anything does go wrong, iMover has a pretty strong warranty, a lifetime on the frame, 10 years on the motors and the electronics, and 5 years on the desktop. This is where that asterisk from the beginning comes in. In my opinion, this desk seems to be worth the money, at least for the list of requirements I had. However, a lot of that value is based on how long I expect it to last. I'm hoping I'll be able to use this thing for the next decade, and whether that happens is going to determine whether I feel like it was worth the money. Maybe I'll do a long-term review at some point to talk about how well it's holding up. Now, I've saved the controller for last. You know, the thing you use to actually make the desk do its job of going up and down? It is by far the weakest part, which may seem like a big problem, but really most of the issues show up when you're setting it up, and then it's okay-ish after that. The setup, though, isn't intuitive at all, and you get three different manuals describing how you're supposed to do it. There's even sometimes contradictory information between them. Let me condense down what you all need to know. This controller doesn't have presets in the way that you may think of them. You can't just press a button and have it go to a predetermined height, a feature that is on a lot of other desks, I might add. However, what you can do is set a maximum and minimum height. To get to them, you just hold the up button or down button, and it stops when it reaches the height you've set. I use these as my sitting and standing heights. 
Now, just because it's called maximum and minimum doesn't mean you can't raise it higher or lower than those if you want. You just have to release the button and then press it again for a few more seconds. It'd be nice if you could have more than two presets, especially if you're sharing the desk with someone else, but that's not even an add-on option that you can get. So if you need that, you'll just have to look elsewhere. One more minor complaint is about the buttons themselves, and that's that they're very glossy and not very tactile. I find my fingers slipping off of them a lot, causing the desk to stop moving. It doesn't happen if I'm actually paying attention, but if I'm just trying to casually raise or lower it, it may stop a couple of times along the way. It's just kind of annoying for how nice the rest of this desk is that this is how I have to interact with it. That's probably enough complaining for right now though. After all that, you may be wondering, should you buy this desk? I'm pretty satisfied with it, but that's because my number one priority was finding a reasonably large desk that didn't wobble. I also do generally try to buy things made in countries that have pretty strong labor laws, so I am willing to pay a price premium to have a reasonable chance that the person making something earned a living wage. Though, this desk is apparently put together by robots, so I'm not exactly sure where that leaves me. But if your priorities are different, it's definitely possible that you'll be just as happy with a different desk. Heck, it's possible that I'd have been just as happy with a different, cheaper desk. It's not like I've tried all the other ones. That said, I don't feel like I wasted my money or got scammed or anything, and if it lasts a long time, I'll be pretty happy with it. And it's good to finally have a standing desk. If you're looking at this one and have the budget, I'd say you'll be okay to go for it. But if you don't, there are plenty of other options that will at least get you standing and moving around throughout the day. So here's the too long didn't watch. iMover Desks has kind of sketchy marketing with that review site, and their name sounds like a Wii accessory from the 2000s. But overall, this desk gets a thumbs up from me. That will turn into a thumbs down though if it starts to break down in a few years. Standing desks as a concept though get two thumbs up, and you should get one if you can. I hope that this video helped you in that journey in some way, and if you have any questions about this specific desk, you can leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. So that's it. <laughs> First review of this desk on YouTube, as far as I can tell. Uh, thanks for watching. At least for the list of requirements. Got someone going up the stairs. Still going.